So we'll continue on with the p-value approach and then we'll carry out the actual analysis over there with the p-value approach and the classical approach based on some observations that we might make. So here's the p-value approach. So the p-value approach says you compute z, since we're doing proportions, you would compute t if it was the mean, but we're not there now. And then we sum the two tail probabilities. So the idea is uh, if we observe a negative z value, say, say down there, we would take the tail like that and we take his friend over here, which is the same size. So if this was like a negative 1.5, we go over to 1.5, we take both of these tails. So this is zero here. This is z. So that's a two-sided p-value, two-tailed p-value um, since h a h a is p not equal to 0.5. It's a two-sided alternative because it's not, not equal to alternative. Either too many heads or too few heads make you think p is not, not equal to 0.5. So either one of those would cause you to believe the alternative. And we want to make sure that doesn't happen by accident too often. So we set this boundary so that's a 5% probability of landing in there by accident. And that makes this place here 1.96. And so minus 1.96, like that. So we, oh, oh sorry. That would make it 1.96 if I wanted to get exactly 0 0.05. Uh, we don't know. This is supposed to be our statistic, statistic value. It goes here. So if it was exactly 1.96, it would be right on the border. And we already know that. If it's less than negative 1.96 or bigger than positive 1.96, we would reject, and that would also cause these two tails to come out to be less than 0.05 in probability. Okay, so we sum the two tail probabilities coming from the test statistic, or we double one tail probability to get the p-value. So this is computed from the observed z. So you find z, and you compute those two tails I usually just compute one of them, whichever side you're on, I go to that tail, and then I'll double that to get the two tails. But you could instead take your z value and change sign and look at the two tails for the two signs. Your choice. Reject at the 0.05 level if the p-value is less than 0.05. True enough. And there's an, uh, a little bit of an aside here. For two-sided tests, this approach has the same result as using a 95% confidence interval. So we said one way to tell if a given parameter value is legitimate, is to create a 95% confidence interval based on the data. And if the parameter falls in the interval, since the interval is about the parameter value, then that parameter value would be consistent with the data. So if we computed a 95% confidence interval and one half fell in the interval, which is the null hypothesis value, then we would not reject. And if and the 95% confidence interval does not contain one half, we would reject that way of testing and the p-value approach for testing with two-sided tests are identical. So that's comforting in a sense. So let's go ahead and uh, carry this out. Suppose you toss a coin 2,000 times and you observe 950 heads. So we said back when we did the computation, I forget the number now, uh, we needed more than, we needed less than 950 or more than 1044. Um, based on the uh, z value of plus or minus 1.96. So we've, without going here, we know that number is less than 956. Look at it again. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. But let's pretend we don't know that. And we'll just go ahead and do the classical approach using a z value. Here it comes. So we set up the null hypothesis and the alternative. We compute p hat. Then here's z. There's p hat sitting there. Here's the null hypothesis p. Here it is downstairs in the standard deviation calculation. I get minus 2.23. We're going to reject if z is less than minus 1.96 or z is bigger than 1.96. That's less than negative 1.96. So reject the, it's this one. Yes, it is. So reject, yes, yes, reject. So that's the classical approach. And the p-value approach says, uh, we'll take the z value we find the tail probability. Uh, it turns out, go to the tables, 0 0.0129 uh, for 
minus 2.23, like that. And then, since it's a two-sided test, we're going to double that probability, so the p-value is actually twice that number, 0258. That's still less than 0.05. Small p-values, smaller, th smaller than the significance level, cause us to reject the null hypothesis, so we reject the null hypothesis. There we go. So that's a comparison of the two uh, strategies. So the advantage the p-value computation has is a person can just look at the p-value and see how it compares to known p-values that you would use for significance and decide what to do. So if this wasn't a z-statistic, it was something else you'd never heard of, you wouldn't understand these values, but you would understand this. All right, let's try to uh, wrap this up. I just, uh, I'm looking at the next page. The next page is the end of 10.2. You know we're uh, starting to get close because it's just these few se sections of 10 and then a couple sections of chapter 11 and we've completed the class which is exciting for me um, because making videos takes about twice as long as teaching the actual class and uh, hopefully the videos last sufficiently long in terms of matching an edition of the book that we get a couple semesters of class out of it because otherwise, uh, I don't know how many people are going to put the time and effort into building a set of lectures like this to match a certain kind of homework in a different kind of book if you have to change it every few semesters or maybe certainly every semester would be a little much for me. So I'm happy to be close to the end, but it's been kind of a, a long road up till now. And uh, maybe this summer when it comes along, I might think about creating another set of videos for some class, but maybe I'll take the summer off for a change. Let's see how that goes. And let's see how you go when I see you on the next slide. Have a great one.